Hello, uh, I am Santiago. I am a PhD, recently graduated PhD student from NYU, and uh, I am going to talk today about Intoto, uh, a way to secure the software supply chain that it's a CNCF sandbox project. Maybe uh, it's incubation by the time you see this video. We don't know just yet. Uh, and the main goal of uh, Intoto is to protect the everything that happens at the left of your software delivery pipeline. Uh, that is uh, the version control system, the build farms, the uh, vulnerability scanners, anything before admission on your cloud. Um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about the problem. I think it's a, an upcoming problem. It's, a, it's something that's been taking the industry by surprise, and it's something that's uh, caused a lot of damages. So. Um, for that reason, I think it's not only important to know what the problem is, uh, but also to uh, know how to tackle it and how to fix it. So uh, after um, I talk about what, a, what the problem is, I'm going to talk about Intoto uh, and how you can uh, use it today to uh, protect the pipelines and your specific companies or your projects. Uh, so with that aside, uh, I wanted to get it to, uh, to talk about how software is made. Um, Again, uh, when we're talking about software supply chains, we usually uh, think uh, need to answer ourselves, well, how is software supplied to users? Uh, and uh, they usually follow a common pattern of uh, software delivery. Uh, to make things clear, uh, here's a very GitHub generation type of so uh, software supply chain, a very uh, minimalistic software supply chain, in which uh, you may have your code, live in a version control system, Maybe you send it somewhere if you're feeling fancy to have it built for you on a build farm. Uh, if, uh, if you're caring about the, the quality of your software, maybe you have an continuous uh, integration uh, service such as Travis running tests on your on every single commit that you make. And finally, some somebody, maybe even yourself again, is packaging this uh, piece of software to eventually get it out into uh, the consumers, the users of your software. So. I know this is a very simple software supply chain, but it's a, it's the a perfect place to start a conversation about the security of it, of, uh, of the whole uh, ecosystem. So again, this is a security talk, so you wouldn't be surprised if I told you that uh, software supply chains can't get hacked, and that's exactly what has happened uh, time and time again. Hackers have been able to break into, say, the version control system and uh, replace uh, the like sort of random seed of a project or insert backdoors into, into software or make malicious uh, pieces of code that can actually uh, subvert the whole infrastructure. This has happened time and time and time again. Uh, and uh, it, is a, it is a very damaging point of compromise because a single point of compromise means that every single user of your product is affected. Now, this was just for the version control system. Um, the same thing can happen in your compiler on your build farm. There has been uh, instances such as the very academic Ken Thompson attack in which uh, somebody introduces a backdooring compiler into the pipeline in such a way that every single product of this uh, compiler is, uh, is introducing a backdoor in software. Or there's been uh, more realistic attack scenarios like the Xcode Ghost in which somebody made a counterfeit version of Xcode uh, that resulted in every single iOS application being compiled with Xcode had a backdoor a big uh, piece of malware. Uh, very popular applications such as Angry Bird were actually affected by this attack. Uh, and uh, we're computer scientists, so we're good at interpolating things. Uh, this is not an isolated incident. This has happened time and time again in the field front as well. Now, uh, speaking of interpolation, I assume that you can also guess that the packaging infrastructure is a very, very uh, good target for attackers. Uh, attackers can break into the, into the uh, distribution or the packaging infrastructure and they can insert backdoors. Uh, there's a case of uh, a backdoor uh, Linux main ISO that ended up being uh, building a, a more than 800 uh, host botnet in less than 24 hours, which was uh, it was a very very small profile attack that ended up creating a relatively uh, medium sized botnet, small to medium sized botnet, in, uh, very very quickly. There's other examples like Kingslayer. There's, uh, there's cases uh, which I like to highlight to uh, pretty much illustrate the problem. Uh, and the, the nature of this attack is uh, PHP my admin. Uh, it was hacked only in the South Korean uh, mirror server. This gave the attacker a very particular uh, fingerprint of the type of, uh, 
of victims that they would find. It was not only a, a very good uh, example of something that may have been state-sponsored or something that uh, may have been uh, just uh, able to attack a single country at once. So uh, there, were finger there was finger pointing going on. Uh, some people, of course, blame North Korea, but there's, a, there's many good explanations as to why somebody could want to target a particular population. Of course, this is not an isolated incident, but this is not the only time that somebody has taken geographic uh, approaches to the software supply chain attacks. Uh, and uh, finally, there's also questions about compliance. Uh, there are many, many things that are happening in your uh, pipeline that uh, may cause uh, even a non-malicious uh, action to uh, affect all of your users. There's uh, cases in the Linux kernel, and there's cases with, uh, for example, Microsoft Windows, in which uh, a Windows update was able to break every single computer that installed it. Uh, and it was originally uh, believed that some hackers broke into the Microsoft infrastructure to cause uh, a very, very damaging attack, but it turned out that uh, somewhere in the pipes, uh, somebody didn't do their job and vetted this uh, Windows update properly. Uh, of course, Windows launched an internal investigation. They were very thorough and they were trying to figure out exactly what happened. And uh, I'm sure that they fixed this problem, but uh, it was already a little late for a couple of users. And I'm not trying to point the fingers at anybody. It's just uh, it's just a state of affairs. We need to be more thorough and uh, more conscious about the way that we are producing and we are delivering software especially now that uh, most of the critical infrastructure relies on our, uh, on our pieces of software. So here's, uh, here's a point in which I want us all to reflect on uh, the nature of these. Uh, what I like about this little example is that uh, even though it's a very minimal, very uh, cartoonish, I would dare say, uh, software supply chain, many of you that are working in the industry may have seen that and said like, oh, this is ridiculous. This is so simple. Like, we don't, we do things way, way more complicated and more elaborate than this. Uh, even in this case, there is uh, eight points of compromise. And uh, on six of those eight points of compromise, a complete software supply chain subversion happens. If any of those uh, six points fail in mean, their security, uh, in their security story, then the final product will be completely subverted. This means that the end user is, is hacked and, uh, and your company loses millions, millions of dollars or whatever. Uh, it depends on your budget, but you get the idea. Now, I hope I did my, uh, I did my job in convincing you that this is, a, this is a problem and this is something that we need to fix. Uh, the, goal, uh, the goal of this is to understand that uh, software supply chain compromises are a thing that's not in, in theory anymore. It's something that's being used by many different actors to produce uh, many, many different types of uh, damages to many different industries. And uh, e even though there's a, a lot of things that we can do today uh, to fix things, we need to think a little bit more holistically. Now, uh, I'm going to go over a little bit of things that you are probably like, aha, I know that I can use a... Uh, Git signing to protect the version control system, uh, or I can use this uh, technique on the build farm. Uh, I am going to show how all of these things can be need to be put in place to, uh, to foster a good software supply chain security uh, story. Now, again, there's many good point solutions. There's things like uh, Git commit signing or uh, push certificates or the reference state log that can help you protect the version control system itself. Uh, there's other things like TPMs and HSN, server verifiable compilers. There's things such as reproducible builds that can help you protect the, uh, the, your build farm. And there's also things such as TLS and DBG and TUF for the delivery mechanism uh, that can help you uh, secure and protect the, the last mile on your software supply chain. So uh, with those, all of those in place, uh, I took the liberty of uh, removing a, uh, some points of compromise. And we still have a couple of questions unanswered. The first one is that uh, we don't know anything about the gaps between the steps. That is, even though you may be following the software, uh, the version control system uh, delivery mechanism properly, uh, you don't know if uh, the person after you that's going to build the sources is actually checking that you're following the, these practices to the letter. And the same can happen to the packaging and the same can happen to the CI uh, test, uh, testing and compliance uh, uh, mechanisms in place. At the end of the day, it's a, it's both a question of security uh, and a question of compliance. Uh, is everybody following things uh, 
the way they should, and is uh, everybody following the right security policy? And uh, that's exactly the type of problem that we're uh, that we're against when we're talking about uh, software supply chain security and holistic security on software on software supply chain. So uh, to make things uh, summarized or easier to uh, understand is we want to follow three goals. We want to first define uh, in a verifiable way what is supposed to happen in a software supply chain. Define the steps on your software supply chain. I have a version control system that looks like this. I have a build farm that looks like that. I have a packaging infrastructure that looks like this. And all of this is completely being checked by a, uh, by a CI system. Um, after that, we also want to uh, define the, uh, the, uh, the actors, not authors, the actors that are uh, participating in the, in, your, in the supply chain. This means uh, we know that the version control system is going to be uh, being carried out by a, a team within my uh, software engineering team. And we know that the person that uh, does packaging and delivery is probably uh, the software uh, reliability engineers or, I don't know, any other uh, role within your organization. And finally, because a chain is uh, a series of point joint links, we want to make sure that every single step is properly uh, connected to each other. We want to uh, guarantee that everything happens to definition and that there's no gaps between the stories on each individual step. So now I'm going to tell you how you can use Intoto to provide these properties on top of the other security properties that I was talking about earlier. Uh, to do this, we use two things in Intoto. The first one is called a layout. Uh, layout is a piece of policy that the project owner or a security engineer at an organization will define, and it will describe things on, on your supply chain. It's going to decide what needs to happen and how it should happen. So to do that, it will have a series of steps defined. Say I, it will say I have a version control system, I have a build farm, I have a packaging infrastructure, and I have a CI set up in place. Then it will create uh, or allow you to define a series of functionaries, which are the actors that will partake in the operations in the supply chain. It will say, Bob, the version control system person, will be taking care of the version control system, and Carol will be taking care of the build farm. It will also say, Dave is the third party that's uh, taking care of the CI, and that's uh, and Aaron will be the one that will be doing the package. It will also uh, let you define what are the materials and products, but this is a uh, non-overloaded word that we chose to, uh, to talk about software artifacts. We know that uh, Bob will be talking in a language of uh, maybe version control system files, uh, say source code or, or like build uh, tool chain uh, definitions. Uh, we know that Carol will be talking within the same terms, but uh, maybe Carol will be producing binaries that are uh, executable files. We also know that Aaron may be talking on binaries and also packages. So uh, all of this uh, type of software artifacts will be defined and will be assigned to an individual step. And uh, in order to prevent uh, this uh, security stories to be separated from each other, it will uh, use uh, artifact rules, which are describing how these artifacts will be connected uh, between each other. It will say Bob's version control system files will be the ones that will be input to both the CI system and the build farm. Uh, and both of them need to agree on the, that they're using the same artifacts. And uh, Carl will say uh, what is the resulting binary of the of the build, and Aaron will say uh, what is the resulting uh, package that Aaron, that she created. With this uh, and the signature to uh, make sure that this is uh, the right uh, file created by the right person, we know exactly what needs to happen. Now. Now that we know that what needs to happen, we uh, need to carry uh, to collect information about what happened. This is uh, generating evidence of the operations as they were carried out in the supply chain. So in the in total world, to do this, we uh, have another type of file that is a layout, it's called a link. Uh, this link files are essentially a series of uh, attestations created by each individual actor or functionary in the supply chain. So Bob will create a little rubber stamped uh, version of their of their operations that they will say, I actually checked out, uh, created this Git tag. And uh, Erin, which will be doing the package, will say, I took uh, Carol's uh, binaries and I created this, uh, this uh, package. And here's my rubber stamp saying that I was the one that did it and nobody else did. 
So when we do this, we are able to uh, verify uh, and we turn the conversation into the, 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 does my definition of what I needed to happen, my uh, policy defined in the layout that said, this is uh, the way that my supply chain needs to be carried out. Does it agree with the evidence that I collected in this uh, series of attestations created by all of the actors in the supply chain? And with that, we can uh, basically turn the whole conversation into uh, following a cryptographic paper trail and uh, matching it uh, against the policy all the way from the package uh, and back into the version control system or as far left as you want to take it. Uh, you can include uh, conversations about the decision making, the sign, uh, legal review, you name it. It doesn't need to be an automated uh, step. You just need to create the attestations yourself. So just to wrap up, uh, in total is a framework that allows you to define uh, how the things in your pipeline should have been carried out and then to collect evidence uh, of how the things in your pipeline were carried out. Uh, that way you can describe precisely uh, the way that you wanted your software to be made and you can enforce on each individual step of your pipeline that it was carried out uh, to the letter. Now, something I'm very excited about uh, in total is that it's, uh, and this is a cliche phrase, but uh, uh, supply chain is only as secure as its weakest link is that uh, we need everybody in the ecosystem and the community to be uh, involved and to participate. So Intoto has been uh, working alongside a lot of different uh, communities out there to, to create integrations, to be able to provide the security uh, properties that, uh, that we need to make a stronger software supply chain. One that I'm uh, particularly proud about and excited about is Texan and Intoto. Uh, the, it's a project called Chains. You can uh, use it to uh, track uh, each of the operations that uh, that are being uh, carried out by uh, Tekton and creating total link attestations for them. So you can verify them uh, at the end of, at the end of the process. Now I'm going to drop a link at the bottom of the chat, and you can uh, use that to both see a, a demo of the project and also get involved if you want to take a to partake into developing uh, chains. And uh, with that, I want to conclude. Uh, uh, just, to, uh, just to wrap up, uh, securing the software supply chain is important. It's uh, an up and coming problem that, uh, that it's, uh, being, it's causing a lot of damages all across the industry. And I, I think it would be important for uh, everybody here to start uh, taking a look at it. Uh, in total, it's also the first tool that allows you to holistically protect the software supply chain. There's many simple but software wrong approaches. Uh, in total, is a project that took us uh, five years at NYU to develop and to make sure that it can be used to both protect your supply chain and to uh, protect any supply chain out there. And uh, we also want to invite you to try out in total and not only try out in total, but uh, if you want to join a thriving open source community of uh, security enthusiasts that wants to protect uh, this uh, very important aspect of software, then uh, please reach out to us. We're in the uh, CNCF Slack and in many other channels uh, listed on our website. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much.